Happy Halloween everyone, I'm Brian. Today we'll be carving our pumpkin that we grew this year. It's not very big, but we have something to carve uh, nonetheless. Hopefully next year we'll get big pumpkins. We learned a lot about growing pumpkins this year. But today um, we'll be talking about pumpkin carving. So pumpkin carving, we'll need a, a pumpkin, uh, some uh, tools for carving. Many of us use templates. You can freehand it um, as well. This template is from pumpkin, pumpkin carvings, pumpkin carving patterns.com. Some tape, scissors, um, a marker, and then we'll need a poking device of some sort. So we have a, we have a uh, Letterman skeletal with a little poker here attachment. Let's get started. There are many ways to carve a pumpkin. Uh, to use a template, you can go and download a template and you can scale it down using the printer scaling feature. Uh, here, this one was scaled down to 40%. Sometimes it's trial and error, so you wanna fit it and make sure it fits pretty good. And afterwards, we're going to cut our template. So here's our our pumpkin. There's always, a pumpkin's not symmetric, so half the fun is also finding the right place for it. And um, I think we'll use this side here. Not sure how all this uh, roughness is gonna come out. We'll just go ahead and, and start. Okay, we'll use a poking tool to poke the template. So with our holes, we're going to trace pretty much connect the dots so that it is easier to see the p pattern that we need to carve out. Well, we're gonna have to get another marker. So this is what our pumpkin's gonna look like. Now the next step is to cut the top out and for, for the carving and cutting we're going to be using this WC Pro pumpkin carving set and this is the first time this is a new set for me and I like I like this over the plastic tools and we'll talk about it at the end of the video where I kind of do a video review if you're interested in this tool this tool is about 15 or this tool is about $16. So the important thing when cutting out the top is to not go straight up and down because what happens is if you do that, when you go and cover the top, it'll fall right through. So you wanna come and cut it at an angle so that the, the top doesn't fall through. This pumpkin was grown from last year's store-bought pumpkin. The seed that was inside it. So we have the inside scooped out now. And generally, the advice for carving pumpkins is to make sure that the, um, the rind is not more than an inch thick. This looks like half an inch at most. 
um, and especially if you're doing really intricate designs you want that to be really thin and you have to go in and scrape all the flesh and make the rind a little bit th thinner. Okay our, our design's not very intricate so we don't need to really go in with a fine really fine um, salt blade here. This, there's different this one's a little bit more fine than this one and um, this is I guess the most, most coarse of the blades. Let's see if we can work with this. If not then we'll, we'll switch it up. There we have it, our, our carved pumpkin. It doesn't look like anything right now. Under light, under candlelight in there, it'll look really cool. So we'll wait for it to get dark and we'll light our pumpkin up. We also have another, two other pumpkins carved that were, uh, the pumpkins were purchased from the store. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you what they look like. It's always fun carving pumpkins. Um, it's something that I didn't do until very recently uh, after having gotten married and it's something that my wife do and I do for fun every year. Uh, if you have any tips on pumpkin carving, please be, sh be sure to share with us um, and what your, your favorite pattern is. Here's our jolly pumpkin that we just carved and this is one that carved was carved by my wife, a dory pumpkin from Finding Dory, and it's our son's favorite uh, character at the moment. And this is our spooky jack-o'-lantern that I carved. And this year, I wanted to do a little bit more spooky uh, pumpkin carving compared to the last couple of years. And we'll see a slideshow of the pumpkins that uh, we've carved up until today and uh, once again pumpkin carving is something that I've only done recently um, it's really fun to do and I'm, I'm glad that we have a new family tradition and hopefully our new newer tradition will be to grow our own jack-o'-lantern pumpkins thanks for joining me as we carve this one together and I want to wish everyone a happy and safe Halloween and we'll see you in the next video If you're interested in the tool that we use today, this is one that um, we use for the first time this year. It's the WC Pro Pumpkin Carving Set, and it's made in the United States. Always a bonus for me. Um, this is a walnut and brass carving pumpkin carving tool, and it comes with uh, six blades, and they vary from different um, coarseness. You have these really fine teeth here for intricate details and you have the larger teeth for the cuts like the top or even just um, less detailed cuts like we saw today. This is the basically the key or the tool that helps you lock in the different blades and um, it's well built and an important thing about a pumpkin carving tool is the handle I found. So if you can grip it, you can have a lot of control as to how you cut, cut into your pumpkin and how much force you need to use and whether your hand is going to get tired quickly. Um, used, I've used the disposable pumpkin carving tools um, and they always tend to be a little bit more difficult to use because you can't, get, can't grip it and you can't really um, use it well. But it, it, those tools get the job done. However, if you're like me and you like tools and you want to get something nice that you can use year after year, and if you're going to be using it every year, it's a really good investment. And this is about $16. Um, so to change the blade, you basically loosen that part there and you switch out the blade. Um, at, when you're done with pumpkin carving, 
like any other tool, you want to make sure you, you clean it before you store it. So pumpkin bits are going to get inside. You can flush it with your faucet and all that stuff will come out. So make sure you clean it right away before it dries and gets skunked up. Um, so the, cr the critique part of this re tool review um, is probably the construction. Uh, this is just nitpicking because uh, I, I tend to really examine things um, in detail and sometimes um, when things are not symmetric, perfectly symmetric, I'll notice it. So this, this, this wooden handle is not perfectly symmetric. If you were to spin it, um, that's probably the only thing that I have criticism uh, about this tool is that it's not perfectly balanced. If It doesn't look very balanced, but it works nonetheless. Walnut is a hardwood. It's going to last a while. This um, Walnut is a very hardwood. Brass is a really good material too. And um, definitely something that will last probably a couple of lifetimes. This is a good, gonna be an heirloom tool to pass down. Um, and then that's probably the first uh, thing to get. Maybe the second thing to look um, to get next year is probably some serious scooper to scrape the, f the flesh for those bigger pumpkins. So that's probably the second tool that we'll look to get next year. Some nice wooden handled and really sharp uh, metaled scraping tool. And if you have some to recommend, please uh, do so. We'll, we always love to check out tools.